According to George Orwell in his dystopian novel 1984, quote, Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past, end quote. Most people understand propaganda as being designed to disguise a nation's current policies. What Orwell was trying to highlight is that, in order to be interpreted appropriately, current actions must be placed into a larger historical context. For the most part, that context is so taken for granted that few recognise it as propaganda. In the case of Western societies, that is a legacy of the Enlightenment, which presents European intellectual culture as the pinnacle of human civilization. It was from Lippmann that Noam Chomsky derived the title for his famous book, where Lippmann described, quote, the manufacture of consent as a, quote, revolution, in quote, the practice of democracy. That has become, quote, a self-conscious art and a regular organ of popular government. This, he claimed, was a natural development when, quote, the common interests very largely elude public opinion entirely and can be managed only by a specialised class whose personal interests reach beyond the locality, end quote. Benet's, on the other hand, was a double nephew of Sigmund Freud, by his mother who was Freud's sister, and of his father's sister, Martha Benet's Freud, who married Freud. During World War I, Benet's worked for the Wilson administration, with the Committee on Public Information, also known as the CPI or the Creel Committee. It was influential in promoting the idea that America's war efforts were primarily aimed at, quote, bringing democracy to all of Europe, end quote. Stunned by the degree to which the slogan of, quote, democracy was successful in swaying public opinion, Benet's wondered whether this propaganda model could be employed during times of peace. Due to negative connotations associated with Germans' use of the word propaganda, Benet's opted for the term public relations. Benet's thinking was heavily shared by and influenced Lippmann, who sat on the CPI with Benet's, quoting him extensively in his seminal work called Propaganda. Citing works of Freud and Lippmann, Benet's pioneered the field of public relations and its use of psychology and other social sciences to shape public opinion. Benet's described the masses as irrational and subject to herd instinct, and outlined how skilled practitioners could use crowd psychology and psychoanalysis to control them in desirable ways. Therefore, according to Benet's quote, if we understand the mechanism and motives of the group mind, is it not possible to control and regiment the masses according to our will without their knowing about it? The recent practice of propaganda has proved that it is possible, at least up to a certain point and within certain limits, end quote. Benet's later called this scientific technique of opinion modification the, quote, engineering of consent, a variation of Lippmann's, quote, manufacture of consent. In the book Public Opinion, written in 1922, Lippmann wrote, quote, that the manufacture of consent is capable of great refinements, no one, I think, denies. The process by which public opinions arise is certainly no less intricate than it has appeared in these pages, and the opportunities for manipulation open to anyone who understands the process are plain enough. As a result of psychological research coupled with the modern means of communication, the practice of democracy has turned a corner. A revolution is taking place, infinitely more significant than any shifting of economic power. Under the impact of propaganda, not necessarily in the sinister meaning of the word alone, the old constants of our thinking have become variables. It is no longer possible, for example, to believe in the original dogma of democracy, that the knowledge needed for the management of human affairs comes up spontaneously from the human heart. Where we act on that theory, we expose ourselves to self-deception and to forms of persuasion that we cannot verify. It has been demonstrated that we cannot rely upon intuition, conscience, or the accidents of causal opinion if we are to deal with the world beyond our reach, end quote. So where else is propaganda so prevalent in today's culture? It is in the media, social entertainment, or the, quote, 
bread and circuses in which most people consume on a daily basis. So it shouldn't be a surprise to find the extended family succession of Edward Bernays, just like Sigmund Freud, to be involved in the co-founding of you know, something like Netflix, which is arguably one of the biggest tools for social engineering for entertainment. Well, it is true. His name is Mark Bernays Randolph, who is the great nephew of Edward Bernays, and Edward Bernays being a double nephew of Sigmund Freud, him the founder of psychoanalysis, in which today is being used mostly against its own population to subvert people's opinions, beliefs and values. Some of the most obvious forms of this happening in Netflix or through Netflix television is one, you, season three on Netflix, which endorses violence against unvaccinated people, Squid Game on Netflix, which endorses the idea that you should always basically love your servitude for the meaningless pursuit of money no matter what, Cuties on Netflix, which endorsed the sexualization of children. 13 Reasons Why on Netflix, which was accused of romanticizing and glamorizing teen suicide. Sweet Tooth on Netflix, which is about how a pandemic causes a post-apocalyptic world of genetically mutated babies in it. Back Mirror on Netflix, which is, with or without intention, a form of predictive programming and Inside Job on Netflix, which is this cartoon that is designed to subvert and mock the possible importance of what conspiracy theories are and what they might actually mean for us by subverting them through comedy. And then you have the many different, you know, narratives in films, TV shows, and the different storylines that they're all from, from other streaming services. It goes on and on, etc, etc. But what do you think? How does big business attempt to engineer a form of consent from its own people? How do they try to change people's perception of reality, values, beliefs, and opinions of this world, so that you stay and continue to be somewhat blind, controlled, and a doormat to deception? Tell me in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it around with your friends, and subscribe for more content similar to this. Thanks for watching.